very specific uh, group process invented by dun -dun, Stanford Beer, right? Yes. <laughs> integrity. So yeah, you are the integrity guy. Tell us something about that. Yes. Well, Teams Integrity is one uh, large group process that was invented by Stafford Beer. Uh, just note that there are many other large group processes. I have two books here uh, which um, describe large group processes. And well, uh, this goes into dozens. Uh, they are very. Um, there are some famous uh, ones like uh, strategy, uh, strategy workshop, or open space, and so on. Now, uh, what I find particular in Stafford's team's integrity process is that it has a very strong theoretical uh, basis. By the way. Uh, Stafford was very much inf influenced by Buckminster Fuller when he designed that. And well, uh, it's not, I cannot describe the process in detail in two minutes, but I can say more or less uh, that the process here is organized along the mathematics of a polyhedron, uh, especially of the, um, of the, uh, Plato's, uh, sci uh, Plato's uh, spaces. Yeah? And uh, the icosahedron is uh, the most famous one. Icosahedron, which is the most complex of the symmetric uh, um, um, how do you say, well, uh, polyhedra. It has, an icosahedron has 12 vertices, 30 edges, and is made up of 20 triangles. And that's where the name comes from. Ecosi is 20. So one, can you imagine that? It looks like a football. It looks like a football. It's not the full football because you have to truncate the vertices. Then you would have, a, if you truncate the 12 vertices, you have exactly the shape of a football or also of a Buckminster Fullerene. That's exactly the C60 has exactly that structure. Now, what's the use of this structure for a group process? The use is the following. Uh, you take a number of topics and in the case of the icosahedron, it would be 12, but it also works with 11 or with 15. But the ideal uh, constellation would be you have 12 topics and each vertex with the five edges coming to the vertex is a team. So you have now give every uh, team a color, red, blue, and so on. So you will then um, have meetings of two pair of, of a pair of teams. And, and finally of all pairs of teams. So you would have uh, two groups facing each other, let's say purple and blue. And they would discuss during 45 minutes, let's say, and they would produce some output related to the topic. And here we have already a holistic aspect because they discuss the big theme, the big question of the topic, let's say, what will be uh, the future of COR? Uh, that could be the, the orientating, uh, the big question. And then we would ourselves break this down into a number of questions, let's say into 12 questions, but that's not necessary. There are other kinds of polyhedra uh, by which to orient it. And so then in, let's say in one group, uh, we will discuss the ethics of the future of core of COR. Uh, in another, we would say uh, it's the finance of COR. In another would be the, the, um, the, the manpower and so on. Yeah? And certainly, probably the purpose would be in, in all the teams. I don't know. So now, each participant of the disintegration is represented by an edge of the polyhedron. So we have, as I said, we have the, the vertices. And I have team blue is the vertex held by five edges, and these five edges are persons. Now, 
you see already, I have 12 vertices and I have five people per vertex, that would be 60. But I only, we are only 30 people. That means everyone holds two roles. I am a member of two teams, blue and green, for example. So we have 60 roles in 30 people. And then there's an additional aspect that is that each one of us also holds a role as a critic, as a critic of two next neighbor teams. So we have 120 roles distributed among 30 people. And so, so what's, the, what's the strong aspect about this? The strong aspect is that we have a central team discussed in 12 sub so 12 specific context discussed by the same people, but in different constellations. And this aspect that different constellations or, or constitutions of teams uh, um, reverberate, yes, this, this leads to a reverber reverberation of the topic of the the total topic and the subtopics. And this reverberation, pro, uh, reverberation produces a coherent body of perspectives, different perspectives, but all of them linked to the core of the, of the issue. Usually we do these integrations uh, the following way. Before we go into these group sessions, we have something like a creation of, of topics. So everybody sends in topics, as many as they want. And then in a process, uh, in, a, in a social process, this is broken down into a maniable, into a maniable number of topics. We call that oh. the topic auction. Uh, well, we call uh, that Ma the- Max, uh, uh, how, how about the actual number of uh, such Mm, workshops being done are uh, being done by your company. Well, it was. Uh, uh, I don't have a company. I mean, somebody else is doing that. Uh, who? Oh. What's his name? Uh, uh, Malik. Malik. Well, Malik. Malik. Yes. So, so, so how Malik about the Malik company? Mm -hmm. uh, this can be done to any number of uh, of people, but it's really worthy or valuable doing it in relatively large numbers. So if you have a icosahedron, we you do it with 30, but you can also allocate two people on one edge. So this will be something between 18 and, uh, and 40 or something. Yeah, I, I, if you I have was less asking, I, I'm sorry, I, I was asking uh, the actual practice uh, of uh, Malik's company using this method in Europe. Uh, I mean, how many projects or actual workshops that he, they, he or and his company can perform every year? Do you have that? Well, I don't know what he does per year, but he claims to have realized more than 500 integrations. Or more than 500. Yeah. Now, my experience goes further back uh, because Stafford Beer was developing this at mm -hmm. the, well, around 1990. Mm -hmm. And he came as a guest professor to our university and I still worked with him on the method. So mm -hmm. in the book, you can, <laughs> you can see that I, I worked with him on the method. And so we did the first integrations in Manchester and in St. Gallen, two, the two seminal integrations. Mm -hmm. And after that, then at some point it was picked up by Malik for the commercial uh, use of this. And I must say he did a very big work on that. And he, he developed specialty, special uh, ways of blending it with uh, the activity of consultants and so on. Mm -hmm. So it, it was, that's it. So, so we have far beyond 500 nowadays. <laughs> okay. Uh, George, uh, by hearing everything previously we talked about, what do you fear uh, 
what kind, which method or which approach uh, that you probably would consider employee in, in, in IEEE-S? Um, <clears throat> I would have to say we're still discussing that. Mm. Uh, and just like you presented a number of different approaches uh, mm. within IEEE-S, we've had presented to us a number of different approaches. <laughs> And of course, everybody thinks their approach is, is the one we should, should take. <laughs> because uh, every model needs, need, uh, we need to uh, have a salesperson for every model. No, I, I model. would object to that. I would object to that. Uh, Nobody, we, we are not the market of salespersons. Uh, uh, we are not proselytes. Proselytized okay. their approach. I think we are we are people with a scientific background, and we we <laughs> really want to to get a rational uh, approach to se select or to to collecting, uh, and then to evaluating, and then to selecting the approach that's so, most convenient for the purpose we are dealing with. I would agree. Is that uh, what we're looking for? <laughs> the methodology to select the methodology. There should be. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, uh, we should be applying our cybernetic principles to it. I, um, I, I'm not going to advocate one or the other, uh, but the, I think there are some deep cybernetic problems with some of the approaches and from my perspective, and, and it okay. depends whether you agree with that. Um, I think that um, beliefs and actions come out of doing um, and a lot of these techniques pretend to be rational, or think they are rational by following a linear process. And I don't think that's what happens. I think when you do something, you create a value instantly. So uh, in, in VSM terms, system one is, as soon as it's making a distinction, is creating a system five. And one of the problems I have with Syntegrity is that um, the one we did on Metaphorium was 600 man days of work. It was phenomenal. We went on and on and on, and the solutions were top down. The solutions were top down. And for me, that's great. You, you package all that up. Where's your process for keeping that going, for revisiting it? You can't put that amount of work into everything. It's just not practical. Um, it's a great thing for big companies to have a lovely conference, but it's a lot of work. Um, and so uh, some of the ones, Jason, can you put up your slide again? Oh, OK. Because uh... I'll just go through what I think about some of them. Um, people can, not that one, I can't read Chinese. Uh, I, I think I accidentally closed it. I have to find it and uh, open for you. But, uh, but uh, there is... Uh, uh, what do you want something? I will open so. that. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, before that, uh, let me read uh, the comments from Carr because he said he had a doctor's appointment. He considered, I can see myself as an amateur observer rather than participant, but I do like to make one observational comment. Then here is what he said. He said, my impression is that this discussion is so very abstract. Hmm? Wait a minute, what's going on? Oh, okay. Another wrong click of the button. My impression is that this discussion is so very abstract that the leaders who actually deal with the world's problem will not understand it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> professors, listen to this. They will not understand it or even take the time to understand it. See, see why I was pushing you guys to just do seven slides and even five and even three. And in order to increase your effectiveness, in my opinion, it is necessary to illustrate your methods on the basis of concrete examples. For example, how would you apply your system theory 
to solve the problem of the Islamic Republic of Iran getting nuclear weapons. <laughs> that is big, right? Uh, but uh, how would you apply your system of theory to solve the problem of the Islamic uh, Republic of Iran getting nuclear weapons? I know that I and many others would truly appreciate connecting your abstract approach to concrete specific problems. Again, thank you for inviting me. I need to leave now until next time. Best wish to everyone. Can I say something, sir? Yeah, your turn. <laughs> uh, I, I, it reminds me about of my study time that you sometimes had working groups who wanted to solve the problems in Chile. Yeah. Uh, it's ambitious and I, I think it's not our task to solve the problems of the Republic of, uh, of Iran. That's beyond our reach and uh, that's politics and it is not our intellectual task. What I appreciate of these meetings is our intellectual exchange. I sometimes pick up something which I find interesting. I once participated in a disintegration meeting in England and it took two days and I didn't learn anything because it was overstructured. We all had to play this role and that role. We need a kind of freedom and room to, uh, in order to find things which you find interesting to listen to. And that is so there is a difference between a group process and an intellectual process. And uh, I think if we move too much to a group process, it's okay to have a reflection upon our own process in, as a group process, but it should not overshadow the intellectual process. And then these stupid ideas that we can solve the problems of the Republic of Tehran. <laughs> You're going to stupid. <laughs> okay, Klaus, Klaus, raise your hand. I, I fully agree just what Lord said, that it, the disintegrate, it, it's, it's such a structure that it requires, first of all, many, many people in, in, in very structured roles. And in the end, we will, not, we will not get anything out of it. I have been in part of them. So I think that is, that, that is a big mistake to go to. There's another, in the beginning, there was also a reference to us as a system, I don't think we are a system. We are a group of intellectuals, teachers, whatever, and interested in particular topics. So we should not really talk about, and in fact, even the, the, the term club is, I'm not so sure if I'm very happy with that, but for our own, describing our own process, I would say discussion or better still conversation. And the conversation has to emerge with the kind of problems that someone raises. Now, um, the, I mean, Jason mentioned several uh, procedures where there is only for one minute a, a, a presentation and, and then someone else takes another role. I don't think that is viable. I mean, I remember when I had to say something, I, I had to reduce it to, to 20 minutes. And uh, it, it's a big problem that, uh, that, that I, had to, I wanted to address. I couldn't. Uh, but I did my best. It, but one has to leave if people did enough time to say where they come from and where they want to go. There was one, I forgot now who made this proposal, which I thought was a good idea, or to, to start with data, uh, to, to say what the problems are, and maybe uh, getting is the issue of having a concrete example and not going to Iran, but a, a concrete example that we experienced here. And then thirdly, it has to be somehow related to cybernetics. And we are not, we are not cooks, we are not systems theorists. We, we, I mean, as a cybernetician, this is part of it, but I think this has to be focused on some topics. We, uh, Jason mentioned the Macy Foundations. The Macy Foundation conferences, they were clearly structured initially on feedback mechanisms. Later on, after Arena uh, became more, more known and 
this, this was called cybernetics. But there was a clear topic and everyone was talking actually about that. And now there were people that came from, uh, from neurology and looked at feedback mechanisms among neurons, that uh, others uh, feedback mechanisms in biology. I mean, there was a, there was a general uh, topic which was still ambiguous enough to get enough people interested and develop it. And I think my, my, my perception of that, and I have heard many people talk about it, and then I know Heinz von Furstory, I know Margaret Mead, I met her at some point, and they were all, and, and uh, Ross Ashby was also at the meeting, and they told me that they, they were very open, they listened to whole papers, and then they discussed it, and did something and then integrated it in their own work. And this is the kind of thing that I would like to see happening here. Jamie, you, you raised your hand. Yes. Actually, it's very interesting uh, that uh, Klaus just mentioned that because uh, you mentioned feedback systems. And so my, my thing that I was thinking, why don't we stick to the name feedback systems because cybernetics i think um the, the the name has been hijacked a little bit uh does that cyberspace and all that other stuff so um as a footnote i'm also going back to an earlier question of jason that he said why are the only 60 members or I don't know exactly what the number was but why are not more people joining us and I think there is just some barrier in terms of understanding and maybe the word feedback system is really putting in place or, or focusing us on the problem and the, the problem for instance that also came up with the discussion about Iran is that uh, the way we think of other human beings and and that get me back to a comment um, I, I, I apologize for a little bit all over but that's something that Jonathan said he said shared belief systems but that's maybe where we, we, we start with making the mistake by assuming that the belief systems are shared so in reality there is no um, desire to disagree uh, but the, the fact that the person doesn't uh, uh, articulate this agreement does not mean that he shares the belief system. He just thinks it's not worth investing in articulating uh, criticisms or disagreement. So, so it is like uh, an... Up We're losing her connection. Richard, you raised your hand before. Yeah, I... And Jonathan and I did a lot of talking and thinking about some of this. And starting out with a question that's important to the group, focuses the group on that particular issue and brings a lot of energy into the conversations. And then as we go through it, using that process Enneagram patterns, a heck of a lot of energy and dialogue and feedback take place as things evolve. And the process is not highly structured other than following the process. Uh, and it, people seem to get it very quickly and it's not a hard process to use and it's simple. So I just would offer that again. I didn't know if I'd made that clear. Thank you. Lloyd, raise your hand. Yeah. Yes, I, I just wanted to say that we can perhaps structure it a bit more. Some people are taking the freedom to, uh, we are then a captive audience and we have to sit through more than half an hour. Uh, I, I think the, it's also a question to you, Jason. Make it a bit limited to, let's say, 20, 25 minutes, and then let's people then round off it within three minutes or something like that. And that we have a bit more structure. You mean, you mean uh, for each discussion that doing the main presentation uh, within 20 or 25 minutes? Yeah, or 
you can Good, keep man. it to seven slides or yeah 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 we, we're and trying to bit. push the seven slide through uh, yeah very... i know we shouldn't be too sufi but uh, a bit more <laughs> okay george you're muted yeah i know i have to find my cursor first um yeah the the uh the I Triple S every Saturday morning uh, on in the uh, Western Hemisphere and Monday uh, evening, essentially in the Eastern Hemisphere, we have uh, sessions. Uh, we started out talking about our uh, special integration group, uh, what they were, what they did, all this kind of stuff, and it just sort of morphed into uh, making. Uh, having a group discussion over a presentation. So we have one person who makes a presentation, usually 20 to 30 minutes, and it's just a uh, precise of their, their current thinking, their work, what they're working on now. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, and that's followed by, depending upon the number of people that are there, it's followed by um, a um, round, table, as you described earlier. Uh, it's a somewhat informal round table. And uh, where we call on each person, give them a chance to um, uh, say what they have to say and so on. Or if there are a lot of people, and lately we've been getting in the neighborhood of uh, 30 to 32, 33 people in these sessions, at least the Saturday morning session, um, so what we do is we just uh, have this same situation where you raise your hand and, and if you've got something to say and the moderator calls on you. I'll lower my hand now. Um, and I, what I can tell you about it is it's been an evolutionary process. Uh, we, we established these limited rules for how to conduct these sessions. And it's somewhere between a, um, you know, a uh, conference session uh, and a just wide open, what are you thinking, D discussion, a pub discussion. Um, and it's been very interesting. And I think it's, it's garnered quite a lot of interest. We've got many new members who are showing up. Uh, every Saturday, I notice at least two or three uh, new folks who uh, uh, have decided to join us. Uh, as to what we are accomplishing, that's a little less certain. That is to say, we're not really moving in the direction of how should the IFSS operate. Um, we're not moving in a direction of agreement on, say, for example, a general systems theory. But a lot of really good ideas keep coming up. And so I was at Klaus before, or um, uh, I don't remember who said it, but basically that this is uh, intellectual stimulation. And um, it doesn't matter if everybody agrees or not on, it just gets the ideas out there. And then those of us who are listening and trying to take it uh, can use that to see, well, wait a minute, why, why might that to me? And we've got a lot of background conversations. I'm now in something like four or five Zoom sessions every week with people who wanted to come back and ask questions about various aspects that we had talked about. So um, I'm getting an alert. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to offer that that has felt uh, right in terms of a process for those kinds of sessions. Um, it doesn't cover the whole of IFSS, but it does cover something that seems to be working for the time being. I've also been using those sessions as an opportunity to, to attract more scientists back into IFSS. We've become somewhat uh, uh, overrun, if you will, by um, soft systems people, systems thinkers, so on and so forth. And so we're, we've kind of lost uh, track of the original intent of um, the society. Uh, have uh, brought in three or four uh, legitimate scientists, or earth scientists, um, 
planetary scientists and so forth, because these guys are transdisciplinary to begin with. So they basically, they've been using really good system science methodologies on the work that they do and um, uh, have books out about it and so forth. So I've been inviting them in to give uh, presentations on Saturday morning and uh, they've been, you know, really glad. And then they get to be a member for, uh, for one year, so to speak. So it's been working out, I think, fairly well and uh, nobody really designed it. I see Mark's on here. Um, let's see, I don't know who else might be. Uh, he can comment on how he feels about it. He's on those sessions also. John, I said that. Yeah, I was just going to say that we seem to be solving a problem that isn't there. If you listen to the consensus, um, if you go back to that screen um, I had, can I share that screen? Uh, the, yeah. um, this side here seems to be where people want to be. Um, so just what uh, George was talking about, uh, engage positively with a wide range of communities and disciplines, invite guests from different areas to speak, influence the influencers, develop a reputation for inclusion, sow the seeds of ideas in um, a network, um, seems to be more what people want than solving world problems. Which So for me, the solution seems to be just to realign some of the wording of what we say we do. Does, does, does that make any sense? Lawyer. There appears to be two models <clears throat> for what we're doing. Lote and Klaus really said this is an intellectual activity. And I don't mean it's abstract <clears throat> or just scholarly. What, what's unique about what we're doing is the problem is the problem. The stepping back from the problems of Iran and Shavid Zarif, et cetera, we're looking at the ways of thinking. And there are two models for us. Uh, Margaret Mead wrote a, a book called The Small Conference and in Innovation and in Communication which is out of print in like $300, it's ridiculous. But uh, she makes three major points. One is you have to have concerned citizens that own a problem. They're part of a problem set, but it's not just the immediate problem, it's the discussion of how do you solve the problem that's embedded in a system, number one. And number two is you need a long period of discussion from a diversity of groups to bring together a common language to develop a technique to get to the problem of the problem. Number three is you need a uh, diversity of perspectives. And so there are two models here. She wrote that after the Macy meetings. I've spent you know, six years looking because of reading that book and her daughter, Mary Catherine Bateson, of looking at the Republic of Letters and the Invisible College that led up to the American Revolution. And, and if you look at the, what, what they dealt with, they dealt with the problem of the problem. And what they were looking at is like four or five different things. What were the unintended consequences of the system we have now? Number one. Number two is we need to look at this concept in our embedded cultural system of power, our Western civilization of power. Number three, they looked at the nature of nature as a model beyond the cultural answers. So they're coming up with the questions from nature and that they were saw that communication interactionism symbolic interaction was a antidote to the power and the embedded problems. And so that whole idea that, I mean, Jonathan talked about that is that you have certain problems that are so deep, the existing system does not allow it to solve it. And that's what we can be doing. I will send out to the group an article that just came out in the Atlantic it's called How McKinsey Destroyed the Middle Class. 
And what it does is show how the, and I've been in think tanks my whole life, and you know, I've seen how corrupted it has become. And the think tank world of McKinsey and the management consulting versus just think tanks, the management consulting has a paradigm that it works within, which is suboptimization of the system. So you go to uh, yeah, Purdue Pharma and you say, oh, you wanna sell more painkillers, we'll do it. But you, you destroy the host. And so the whole idea of the management consulting in this article shows how the ideas of problem solving are the problem. And that's where we can really have a unique contribution. And a couple of the presentations today, both Jonathan and uh, uh, Richards uh, and yours, deal with certain techniques that embody that self-governance, that emergence that is missing in our existing tool sets. So, so yes, we do need that concerned citizens that own a problem of the problem, but we're actually getting some tendrils out with, with tools. So I, I'm excited about what we are creating here over the past year because we're looking at the problem of the problem that will help Javid Zarif and Kelly and everyone else trying to solve the Iranian problem because it's the way they're looking at the problem is the problem. I agree with that. I agree with the point that we need richer semantics. And my suggestion would be that we, two of us each time, can perhaps think about a co-authored article. So it, it needs to be not too many, maybe three, because otherwise you get conflicting semantics. But you can enrich the semantics by bringing it translations between two or three. And there's a living example here, Mark. Mark Pearson, you had the, that interesting phrase, a system of conversational types. Could you explain to us what does that mean? Larry's asking the same question. Well, yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I, I, I paid a guy $70,000 a year for about five years to teach about 150 of us, um, you know, Flores's stuff in this community, uh, particularly conversations for action that we trained a bunch, 30 people, you know, basically got them certificates. And, and it, they always talk, that, that group of people, the, you know, Fernando Flores and, and that cadre, they, they always talk about conversational types, but, but I know them and they only have two <laughs> and you need more than two. Uh, I mean, uh, and, and Bob Dunham's a good friend of mine and I could never get him to name a third one. They have conversations for possibility and conversations for action, but there are a lot more. Um, you know, in my hands, in my organization in the past, dialogue was profound, but you, you know, you, you, that, that takes a certain, so there are a set of, ways campfires would be a, a, a conversational type we all know you know when you sit around a campfire a certain kind of conversation occurs you can be much more structured like disintegration and so forth but i wanted for 20 years i wanted a coherent a minimum set of conversational types that can be strung together like beads to get a certain outcome and what you end up running into are people who have their favorite conversational types and they just want to beat everyone else to death with their cool conversational type. But <laughs> people deserve more than that. They deserve a, a system of conversations that they could have a higher probability of succeeding than uh, just liking campfires and marshmallows or just liking Bohmian dialogue or, or just liking disintegration. There, there, there should be a system and I think this group yeah, I've suggested it to other groups. No one's taken me up on it. So I just kind of twiddle around with it myself. But, you know, this group clearly with the intellectual power and experience of this group, that would be a little project. I think for this group, it would be a little project that you could get a good enough set and suggest to people when you're in this situation, start here and go there. I mean, I, I used, you know, De Bono's tools at the executive level with great success, but there's more needed than De Bono's six thinking ads. Anyway, 
probably more than you wanted to hear, but there you are. Larry? <clears throat> yeah, it could be useful. Uh, I've been trying to advance conversation as an end in itself, that it is an action when, when you do deep conversation, it has consequences. And it has consequences when we do it here, although we're very limited, I would say, by the technology we're using in terms of the possibilities for conversation. But even here, what we do here makes a difference in the world. I think that's what Lowell is, is alluding to, that this is important. It, it, in addition to being stimulating, and that's important. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm not sure where I would take that uh, the, uh, categorization of conversations, but I, I can see how it could be useful to, to, to at least consider it. Lucio? I mean, yeah, okay. Um, okay, so many suggestions and uh, I, I find it difficult now to to make order in all these uh, ideas. So in um, at first sight, I would say that I share the, the view of Lut and, and Klaus, that is, so we are not a system uh, because we basically, we are just a group, yes, in which our, our only connection is just exchanging ideas without a specific purpose, that's the point we lack a specific purpose, which is not the very weak purpose, but very generic to stimulate each other with some kind of ideas, hmm? uh, which somehow are referring to cybernetics or systems or uh, epistemology. Hmm? So this, this is, at least so far, uh, this is what we are doing. Uh, of, of course, there is the need also on my side to uh, structure some way our, uh, our uh, loosely coupling uh, group. And uh, a way of structuring was actually my proposal to, to take a case. <laughs> the, the, uh, I mean, you remember the hospital to say, so let's bring our discussions. Okay, I like uh, the distraction are abstract, but uh, I mean, uh, you know, it, it was uh, Carnap, no, you who said that there is nothing more practical than a good theory. So let's try to show, uh, to translate each of our uh, suggestions into a specific case. And maybe on that case, we can measure uh, even our distances or our misunderstandings, but at least this is a way to let's say to create uh, an eigenvalue, no? So let's say the, the sort of the case study becomes an eigenvalue of a discussion, which maybe converge on on, on some point uh, or maybe diverge. Huh? But I'm not saying that this is the only way. Th this was uh, one way to do that. Uh, another way could be focusing on. On a, on a topic, uh, and I was just reflecting when you invited me to to, to speak about uh, the idea of choosing conversation as the topic. Uh, on one side is attractive, but then on the other side, I think is too much vague, too much or too much broad. Uh, maybe it, it could be better to narrow uh, the the topic. Uh, again, to to favor to favor to enhance uh, our structuring. I mean, our 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 own conversation. So probably we need some step in. Uh, okay, Klaus. Well, I I mean, there's so much said, and I'm not too sure if I can really respond to many of the things. But I I think there are many good ideas that. I think we should limit ourselves, for example, number one, to social phenomena. I, I, I think that, I hope that is a bit of a consensus. 
The second part is, and I like Lowell's uh, suggestion to talk about the problem of problem. I would, I would phrase it differently. All social systems have pathologies. And I think it's important to identify them to see whether there is anything that we can do it do about it. Now we have a lot of theories. We ought to think about these theories, but they have limits, and the limits come actually to the moment of complexity, where the theories do not longer work, and complexity is there, and we cannot do anything about it. This is an important challenge, and I would say that is something that we can solve only collectively. We cannot. Uh, we're always stuck with it. And then, and actually, I, I had my objection when, when we talked about, uh, someone talked about complexity theory. We have a theory of complexity. Well, that's ridiculous. Complexity is precisely that you don't have it, don't know anything. But this is the <laughs> challenge. We know the, the conditions when it arises, and that should be our challenge. Now, then, then is the issue of, I think we, we should not always think about things outside. We should think also about our own, be reflexive, be uh, as participants in these kind of complexities that, that emerge or the social systems and not taking the position of a God's eye view, have an idea and, and talking about the idea as if it had nothing to do with anything else. And that is, as uh, Lucio's example, as is of an example, I would say that maybe we're speaking with Larry, that it, it must be making social a, a difference in society, a difference to other people outside this group. And that's, that should be a criteria to, to impose almost, I would say, on our discussion. If it is only, let's say, a mathematical problem, well, this is a mathematical problem, but we can talk about this endlessly or autoporesis, which comes from biology. We can talk about uh, whether that's applicable to social phenomena and maybe, maybe a minute we can spend about it, but I think it is not, at least not unless it is completely redefined. The point is actually, we should see what difference can it make for, for society and not necessarily for Iran, but for ordinary things, uh, for example, uh, you know, what happened in the United States, the issue of democracy, the issue of uh, violence. And, and th these, are, these are burning issues for which we can, we can solve something. Now, I wanted to say something about Jamie. She mentioned feedback, or actually I had mentioned feedback, but from a historical point of view, that the, that the Macy Foundations initially were enthralled with the idea of feedback. Now, I think I could say more generally that we are looking for circular type of dependencies or complex the, the, the internetworks, et cetera, et cetera. These are different kinds of structures than the traditional feedback that gave rise to the, um, to the Macy Foundation. But there are certain patterns that are new that we don't really understand the implications of. And that is a, 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 an important topic for a discussion in my, in my view. So, and I think uh, speaking of conversation and, and so on, the, the importance is that we have multiple disciplines, multiple approaches, multiple views. And to me, conversation is the best way of bringing them together if we respect each other and then we create something new. And that is what I was looking forward to, to a group like this, um, that, that we present new ideas, we criticize each other, not in a negative way, but building on top of each other and creating something new. Lola. Let me try to build on Lutz and uh, Klaus's insights there. Uh, if you look at how the successful Macy meetings and the Republic of Letters that led to the American design, what they had was a type of generative uh, thinking. So it was a conversation that it was a generative thinking that out of the combination of individual ideas, you were able to transform to another level that got out of the problem set. So my suggestion is for us to think of ourselves as a good housekeeping seal of approval 
or a consumer reports. What do I mean by that? If you have ideas, they need to be tested. And if we can develop the test, like uh, you know, Richard embeds self-governance in his methodology, I would use that as a criteria of giving him at least a little blue ribbon somewhere because he's embodying those ideas that we are trying to get that are say are essential or pillars to, I hate using the word ontological or living systems or what Klaus talks about social systems, how they live. And so the idea that Luke comes up with in terms of joint authorship or something, but we should be moving towards coming up with the criteria of a consumer reports to test your idea. Let's test your approach of Iran. Ooh, your rationalism really got off track there. You're okay. not looking at generative processes and allowing that. Yeah. So we could approach things. So maybe the model for us is continue our you know, communication as a concerned citizen that owns the problem over a long period of time. But our goal is to come up with and say the checks and balances of the ideas that are out there that are running rampant in social media, we better give some criteria of how to evaluate that. And that goes to Klaus's critical cybernetic theory. Marcus, do you have a response to everything said before? Well, there's, I mean, uh, the question if this is a system or not, I think it's a matter of definition. And the, if I look, at Anatol Rapopo's way of, of defining the uh, system, he said that a portion, a system is a portion of the world sufficiently well defined to be the subject of study. Something characterized by a structure, for example, a social system. And so, so I don't know, I, I think he is an emerging social system. Because I can, if I if I take foresters methods, for example, I say, well, we are a stock of people conversing with each other, and we are searching a common purpose. I mean, I think this is a social system emerging, and we have people flowing in and people flowing out. So, so I think we can make something of that. But uh, I think the discussion around purpose is still very important. Stuart, and then Jamie. Okay, uh, well, several thoughts. Uh, first, uh, the more I learn about um, Richard Knoll's process Enneagram, the more impressed I am by it and the more I want to learn about it. I've been um, using a method of group facilitation for many years and find it useful, but uh, there's more in um, Richard's method than I fully understood, so I want to study that. So that's one point. The other point is... Um, uh, I'm very much interested in the idea of social science. Uh, however, I've felt that, uh, that the original conception of science was too limited. So I think we need to broaden the conception of science in order to increase uh, awareness of social systems. Uh, nevertheless, there's uh, something about, uh, I've always been attracted to physics. And what I'm finding now is that it's possible to structure the ideas in cybernetics so that they look very much like the style of thought in physics. And so I'm beginning to work on th that point of view. Um, so those are just three of my current thoughts. Jamie. Hmm? Jamie. Yes, um, I would like to apologize. I, I got disconnected from the internet while I was uh, talking, so um, that allowed me to uh, organize my thoughts uh, a little better, but so I, I missed part of the discussion, so I don't know whether I say anything that, that is relevant or not. Um, but uh, in the response to what uh, Stuart just said, um, the difference between a social or a system and a physics system is that the social system has to deal with human agency. And, um, and I think that is something important in cybernetics. And actually, so I was thinking more about cybernetics versus feedback systems. 
And I think that's the reason the word cybernetic stuck because it has a steering and the steering is by the agency uh, of someone. And so, there, um, and so does that, but that is very important that we keep on asking the question, what do we mean by that agency? And I think here uh, we have the different viewpoints in cybernetics or, or different nuances that people answer that question of agency in a subtle different way. And so I think this is something that really needs to be addressed because otherwise we, we never are going to get the common ground if we think about the agency in a slightly different way. And what I'm doing right now, and I hope maybe in a month or so to present something, is to really use logic as the art of making distinctions as, as a starting point for the conversation about agency, is how to carve out a space for that agency. And I think that will be very helpful to see how everyone else, how each one of you is carving out, I, the author as an agent, in conversation with other agents. And, and uh, a closing, this is, I'm very much inspired by Klaus's uh, critical cybernetics. So I, 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 I build on whatever Klaus has been saying because I heard that most clearly in Klaus's presentation, this emphasis on the individual agency. Thank you. Jonathan and Richard concluding remark. Yes, so um, Dr. Meredith Belbin in about the 80s, when he was developing a concept of management teams at Cambridge, he created a game, I think it was like Monopoly, and he um, put together the um, best professors at Cambridge as one team. And then he looked around to find another team for them to play. And, and all he could find was the cleaning ladies. So he got the ladies who did the cleaning as one team and the professors as the other. And to his surprise, the cleaning ladies won. Um, so when he looked at the videos, he found that the professors, the problem was none of them could make a decision. So then he got, he decided that he needed to get managers from top management. And he found that the cleaning ladies won again because the managers all were fighting each other all the way through. But the useful metaphor is that once again, I think we've had a really interesting conversation, but we haven't maybe come to a conclusion. But for me, in some way we have, because it's what we've not said that is important. What Lowett, I think, and Klaus and um, uh, Lucio and Lowell have basically said is that our strong point seems to be that we explore ideas. Um, maybe that is what we do, that is our purpose. And, and maybe we just maybe need to look at how we do that better, uh, if there is a way of doing it better. Um, and, and I think personally, you should give everybody homework and they should get my grid and they should fill in their beliefs and they should come back. <laughs> but I'll leave that. That would then maybe make a decision, but that was all I had to say. Okay, Richard, you have a, do you have a concluding remark? I really enjoyed our conversation today and how things seem to be coming together around the group of ideas. And then coming out of that, there may be subsets of specific things that we want to go and, and take lead on while we're having the larger conversations about subjects that are of importance to us. So I think we can operate at multiple levels and different tools may be useful at multiple levels. Uh, so that, I think, I think I'm feeling pretty good about where the, the group is right now and what might be able to come from this as long as we're open to be able to do specific things as well as having the longer, larger conversations. Thank you. Okay, time's up. Uh, at the same time, uh, there is a important to intellectual leader named Noam Chomsky is going to start his lecture right now at her university. So if you guys are interested, you can move over there. We're really living a cyber life now.